Yo, what's up? We are now at Ayuntidal, and behind me here you see the Ford Mustang Mach E. This is a 99 kilowatt hour version, all wheel drive. Oh, yeah! And today, while well, we are charging it up now, we are going to do range test of it. Let me show you guys the American muscle. Okay, what is it called? Huh? Wait, huh? Did it? This. Is it really called a Mach E4 X? Huh, interesting. So we have wheels, tires, Continental Viking Contact 7, uh, dimensions 225. Whoa, that narrow? 225, 55, 19. Let me check the front. Uh, two, 225, 50. Okay, same. Yeah, no staggered option there. All right. And the back. Yeah, this is the, the iconic Mustang back with the black stallion and the schmutzish backup camera. And then look here. <laughs> it has kick sensor. Also has a ski opening, huh? How about that? We have 12 volt outlet here. There's some hooks there. Speaker, we have space under here. We have to do banana box test. Oh yeah, definitely. I just picked it up yesterday. Guys, kick, kick. No wait. Wait, it doesn't. It doesn't work now. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a bad capoeira kicker. No, wait, it went up. Oh, okay. Okay, it was so silent. I didn't hear that. Oh, it, it was closing. I was double kicking it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And look here. There is no door handles. This is crazy. This is the door handle. It opens like this. Yeah, I have some crap here. And we see glass roof. Oh yeah. That's nice. Nice interior. Here in the back here you see we have USB A and USB C. Air vents here. We have actually a flat floor. I have too much crap. I'm gonna do an interior review. But the seats though seems to be typical flat American seats. There is no almost no side support even for the back passenger. And then let's see if we close this one. Boom. In the front though, there is a little handle here. You just have to open it like this. Front looks like this. We have a little Mustang logo here. You see what I'm saying? No, let me, let me move here. Okay, let me move some stuff over. Sorry for that. We are in the middle of the uh, video shooting here, but you see how flat the seats are? Perforated but not ventilated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, we finished charging. Wow, we finished charging. I better get going then. We'll close this one. Yeah, okay, and then it honks at me because the car is on and we are walking around the car. So, we are at 100%. It took only 127 minutes from 84%. No, wait, 82 to 80. 82 to 100% took two hours. Okay, but let's uh, unplug and then do the range test. Is it on? There. Ooh, look at that. And then the flap here. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, at least the charging port is on the side, which is slightly better than having enough in the front. Let's go inside. Let me show you. Oh, okay, again, open here. Zhoosh. Okay. This is the first time you guys see me enter das auto. Well, I mean, it's American auto. Seat belts, we have an instrument cluster, it says 100%. I think we have to fire up the car. Okay, we shouldn't stay here too long. Let's reset the stuff and then start driving. We are on the run now. And the first thing I notice is that this car is quiet. But remember that we are using Continental Viking Contact tires and they are more quiet than the, than the Nokian tires. But I have to cruise at 95 kilometers per hour on the speed. Oh, yeah, you see, here, we don't see that with the, with the regular eye, but we have some infrared stuff going on here. I don't know what it is. And then uh, it's minus five degrees Celsius outside. And the funny thing is that here we have this trip. This trip is automatically reset. Trip computer one, I reset it manually. You see that we have reset it at the same time. But the weird thing is that this one seems to be stuck at 300 watt per kilometer. 
And you see, even though you have uh, fractions here, they never use the fractions. This one seems to update faster. And this one seems to be correct, you see? But it doesn't use fraction. <laughs> uh, so I think I have to try to drive without stopping. Because if I stop, then this one might reset. And I don't want that to happen. And then we have some auto steer going on here. Oh, we have a slow car. Is that Nissan Micra? Is it Nissan? Wait, where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Yes, it's a Nissan Micra who is driving even slower than me. <laughs> but we have auto steer here and it seems to work okay. You see, wait for it, wait for it. It's going to lock. There, there. It locks in now. And now it stares for you. You just have to pay attention and you have to grab the wheel about every 15 seconds. Or you can just put your meat on the wheel and then it won't bug you like this. So that's good. But the first thing we're going to do now is weigh the car. Man, this one is kaput. It says CA. CA. Which means kaput. Okay, okay, whatever. Uh, we can check the other scale at uh, Garden Moon. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Whoa, what the heck is. Huh? What happened to Mjösen? Huh? We have snow on Mjösen today. Or oh, ice. What? Oh well, oh well. Not the best weather, but this is the best day really. It's, it's quite shitty nowadays. We had nice weather before, but today and for the following days, it's going to be snowing a lot. So yeah, this is the best day we can do it on. Okay, we're gonna test the auto steer now. What happens if we don't hold the steering wheel? Oh, it slows down. Nice. In the control. Oh, this is nice. It it still keeps the lane and it slows down. Okay, let's resume. Okay, let's resume. That's good. That's good. That is very nice. Some cars, like the IPs and Kona, just disables auto steer and wants to kill me. But look, listen to the sound. Freaking hilarious. It's like a video game. No, what, 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 ah, shit. That was a weird cycle because we had a little merge going on. Okay, and then you see there, now, now, when it goes like boof like that, then it enables and then uh, it will stare for you, but after 10, 10, 15 seconds, it will bug you. <laughs> okay, let's stop playing around, okay? Whoa, look at this. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm gonna try to zoom in. You see there? You hear the sound? That's frozen rain. We had it earlier also on the way up. But this car is equipped with heated front windscreen. We can just turn on this one and then wait a couple of minutes and you will see that uh, it will melt. And that's it. I just waited about uh, two minutes and now the whole windscreen is frost free again. So if you wait for the, well, you can wipe manually here. You see? Hey, front camera, low visibility, clean screen. Well, I'm doing it now. Okay, yeah, the front camera struggles. We, we lost the auto steer. So we need to clean the windscreen. Well, uh, maybe we can wipe a little bit. I mean, we can spray. Uh, Hopefully that helps. Okay, it's still gone. Hmm. We are back at Ayontidal. And, you know, according to, uh, well, uh, according to known distance, or Google, or many other cars, it's supposed to be 182 kilometers to the roundabout. Oh, look what we have here. 180.7 okay we are almost at the roundabout point around here around the middle of the roundabout ish so we can then conclude that um this car shows distance very correctly there yes so we don't have to correct for anything so it means that the consumption right now is 240 watt hour per kilometer 
yeah so uh, but we are down to 51 percent and that means that uh, we will most likely not be able to go one more lap uh, so I'm gonna turn around oh, there they go 50 percent just turn 50 percent now so uh, ah, truck, truck, ah, oh. okay so we're gonna go halfway or somewhere uh, Hamar and then turn around Furness Furness is a good place we are back at Ayuntidal and according to the trip meter we drove 329 kilometers and then we had well 4% or 13 kilometers of range left so all right, all right. and then uh, the, as for the consumption we don't know if it's 240 or 245 or 249 watt hour per kilometer <laughs> but uh, anyway it means that we have 343 kilometers of range today now it was pretty bad towards the end because we had some frozen rain but it wasn't that cold so 340 kilometers of range in winter mm, I get the impression is a little bit low and then okay and as for uh, available energy I estimated it to be only between 82 and 85 kilowatt hour and then we do the yeah based on uh, if it's 240 or 249 watt hour per kilometer so that's a little bit lower than the the manufacturer claim which is 288 but on the other hand I consistently see that the manufacturer number is usually not what we get in the real world so maybe in summer maybe with lower consumption we might get closer to 88 but still i think in summer my gut feeling says that we might get 86 or 87 kilowatt hour yeah all right but now we are charging up Ooh, we actually hit 110 kilowatt at the while but okay and right now it's 107 kilowatt very good but since we are sitting in a Mexican car, we have to eat Mexican. <laughs> this is Mexican food, uh, taco salad from uh, Soko K. Mm. Oh yeah, I, today I didn't go for guacamole, holy guacamole. I went for extra salsa. Mm, mm, mm. Mexican is the best. We have been charging for over an hour and we are at 84% and right now, well, the car doesn't show you any charging speed, unfortunately, but at least, fortunately, we can see it on the, the Ionte charging screen here that, whoops, let me see, yeah, there. We see we are taking now only 13, 14, 15 kilowatts. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I think we're just going to drive now and do the 120 test. The problem with the 120 test is that I don't know exactly what the consumption is and so on but and also it seems like the state of, state of charge scale here is not linear on the top here we seem to have more energy than the bottom <laughs> well okay let's just go for it and i i think we can trust this this trip thing here seems to be more re reliable than this one here which is just way off so let's reset and then off we go 120 test all right, we're now on the 120 test and uh, the consumption since start now we have driven 56 kilometers and the consumption is at 320 watt hour per kilometer okay not too shabby we still have a little bit of frozen rain but it has uh, decreased a lot that's good but man how to say that the car feels fairly quiet hmm and then as for the interior yeah well it's it's also pretty good let me see if i can turn on some lights here there yeah so i guess i'll come back to the whole interior part but well there's one thing i don't like though is that the, the screen here is is almost too vertical it's not 100 percent vertical but it's fairly vertical i wish it was tilted up slightly more but okay so i'm gonna drive now until i hit around 50 percent slightly below 50 percent then we go back to uh, Dahl we are back at Ionte charger so I actually didn't want to film too much because it was rain well it was frozen rain most of the time so just bear that in mind that the driving condition today was pretty bad we had to keep the, the heated front windscreen running and some there was one guy said that it pulled uh, 70 amp which is around 800 watts so that means 
and this speed it adds about 7 watt hour per kilometer so I think on a nicer day we would average uh, slightly lower than this so the consumption on this run was 320 watt hour per kilometer and I think on a nicer day it would be something like 290 maybe was wild guess but okay given today if we assume 84 kilowatt hour on the pack we can then get 260 kilometers of range so maybe on a nicer day we can get uh, almost 300 kilometers of range yeah in winter Rem remember this is winter range so yeah uh, what should I say about the car it's it sounds fairly quiet the ride is not the best in my opinion um, I feel like I pace and uh, well at some extent e-tron but e-tron feels like a boat but at least the ride in the in the Polestar and I pace is more comfortable and I guess um, Taycan the Taycan is more expensive but I feel like <laughs> I'm not trying to just say this I feel like the ride here is a little bit American <laughs> almost like a Tesla it, it kind of bounces a little bit over the bumps uh, over the highway uh, but um, overall though, no. nice space, fairly good soundproofing, S nice um, Bango Olufsen sound system, yeah, I've mentioned that. And what else? Uh, overall, pretty good space. Also, we're gonna do the, we're gonna do lots of tests, but at least today it was the range test. And okay, in winter, I forgot to mention, this car doesn't have a heat pump, so it only uses PTC heater. So in that regard, not the most efficient car in winter in summer it might be pretty good but in winter not that great so it kind of adds in the line of semi thirsty cars out there or maybe 30 cars we'll see we'll see yeah but uh, at least the charging speed is fairly impressive but we come back to that in another video so i think that's going to be it for now i hope you guys enjoy this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later and before I forget it, yes, let's check the weight. Front axle. Oh, 1120. Oh, 1120. Okay. The whole car. Wait, are we in? Are we in yet? Are we, are we in yet? Oh, 2320. No, wait. Uh, is this 2300 or 2300? Okay, 2300. There you go. Oh, yeah. All right. GG.